One of the most annoying things that can happen in university is that you study a lot for a particular course or a particular topic, you go to the exam and you think you did okay, but then the results come out a few weeks later and your grades are not nearly as good as you expected. The reason this may be the case is because maybe you spent a lot of hours in front of your desk, but you were inefficient when studying. Now this is extremely detrimental in engineering because in engineering you learn a lot of difficult concepts so you need to be as efficient as possible with your time. To help you maximize your efficiency when studying, I'll first get into how our memory works, then I'll talk about 6 tips that'll help you make the most out of your studying time. I should mention though that I do have 2 other videos that give you study tips that I'll link in the description and this particular video just adds on to them. In the other videos I'll talk about techniques like spatial repetition and active recall so I won't be talking about those in this video. There are 3 main processes that make up our memory, encoding, storage, and recall. First we have encoding which refers to how information is taken in and understood. This can be broken down into four methods. Visual encoding which is how something looks, acoustic encoding which is how something sounds, semantic encoding which is what something means, and then tactile encoding which is how something feels. Once our brains encode this information it needs to be stored in our memory and there are two places where this can be stored. We have our STM which is our short term memory and our LTM which is our long term memory. The STM is mainly encoded acoustically, can last anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds, and can only store a limited amount of 5 to 9 things. On the other hand, the LTM is mainly encoded semantically, but it can also store information that's encoded visually or acoustically. It has indefinite storage capacity and unlimited storage duration. Finally, we have the recall process, which is what determines how students actually perform on their tests and exams. The recall process differs between the STM and the LTM. STM is recalled in the order at which it's stored like a sequential list of numbers. On the other hand, LTM is recalled through association. For example, if we take the same sequential list of numbers and associate a story or associate a message with them, it'll be easier to remember because it would have moved to your LTM instead of your STM. 408 are the first three digits of my phone number. I then use this phone number to call my aunt who just happens to be born in 1975. She's worked as a flight attendant in the airline industry for 16 years. Speaking of flying, uh, recently I've been watching this show on Netflix called Manifest, it has three seasons. And for Netflix, I usually pay $12.99 a month to be able to watch shows on it. And I usually watch my shows on my TV, which is about 43 inches. And just like that, I'm able to remember this completely random sequence of numbers based on the story that I created around them. Basically, to study more efficiently, you want to move information from your STM to your LTM. And the way to do that is to create meaning, create stories, and create association between the information and knowledge that you're trying to remember. Now that we have a better understanding of how our memory works, let's get into the first tip, which is to use the Feynman technique. The Feynman technique can be broken down into three steps. First, we have study. Simply try to take all the information that you know about a particular topic and put it on a piece of paper. Try to break it down into its subcomponents and try to understand the entire topic as a whole to the best of your ability. For example, in mechanical engineering, there's a pretty important manufacturing process called injection molding. And let's say that is the topic that you're trying to understand and study. So apply step one by learning the process and how it works, but keep in mind you need to understand it pretty well because in step two you're going to have to teach it to someone else. And just for reference for anyone that doesn't know what injection molding is, it is a manufacturing process that produces plastic parts by melting plastic, injecting it into a mold or a hollow container, then cooling it to create your part. There's obviously more steps to this process, but this is just a high level explanation. Once you've learned the concept, the next step is to teach it to someone. And if you can't find someone to teach it to, then sit in your room and pretend like you're giving a TED talk in front of an imaginary audience and explain to them what you just learned. Then the person you're teaching will ask questions and help you figure out what gaps you have in your understanding. For example, if you're teaching someone else about the injection molding process, some questions that can come up are like, what temperature does the plastic need to reach in order to melt? Can the hot plastic melt the hollow container or the mold that it's in? Are there mathematical equations that govern this process? And step three is to review what you studied and go back and try to fill in the gaps by answering the questions that came up in step two. If you couldn't remember a particular equation or how a specific part moves, then now you know what your weaknesses are and what you need to focus on. The second tip to help you study more efficiently is to make your study sessions as frictionless as possible. The hardest part of studying is honestly just getting started. So if you can remove as many obstacles as you can before you get started, then you'll be more efficient when it comes to studying because you won't be tempted to waste time or procrastinate. So here's what you should do to have true frictionless work. First, the night before your study sessions, you should create a to-do list of exactly everything you plan on doing the day you're going to be studying. The reason this is so important is because if you plan to start studying at 10 a.m., then you should actually start at 10 and not waste the first hour planning what to do then end up studying at 11 or 11.30. For example, this is what my study session to-do lists would look like. First, review the 2D heat equations. Two, complete problems at five. Three, redo tutorial worksheets two and three. And four, email the professor the list of my questions. 
Doing the problem sets and tutorial worksheets are a really good way for me to practice the concepts that we were taught in class. Usually the problem sets would take me anywhere from like 3 to 5 hours depending on how hard it is. Meanwhile, tutorial worksheets would take me anywhere from 2 to 3 hours, usually not as long as the problem set questions though. As I do all of these practice questions, obviously I'll get stuck and I'll find things that confuse me. That's why I'll create a list of questions that I plan on asking the professor or TA after I'm done studying. A to-do list like this will probably take me anywhere from 6 to 8 hours to complete, including breaks obviously. However, when I don't plan out my study sessions like this, it will definitely take me much longer than expected to complete everything I want to complete. The second thing to keep in mind to make your study sessions as frictionless as possible is to have all the equipment and tools that you need ready for you before you start. All your pens, pencils, erasers, calculators, notebooks, laptop, etc. should all be on your desk ready for you to use when it's time to study. You should also have your water bottle and some snacks on your desk as well. That way when it's time to study, all you need to do is sit down and start because everything you need is already right in front of you. And if you choose to study outside like on campus or in a library, then everything you need to study should be in your bag ready to go so when you wake up in the morning, you just take your bag and head out. In engineering, it's inevitable that you're going to be confused and face concepts that you don't understand. You should not spend hours trying to figure out one particular concept, instead set a time cap for yourself for all the work that you have to do. Let's say you find yourself spending over 30 minutes trying to understand one particular concept or solving one particular question and you're making no progress, then take a step back, review your notes or ask your professor or TA for help because there's no point in spending more than 30 minutes on one particular topic or concept if you're not making any progress. For example, let's look at this particular circuit's question. There are six resistors, five of them have the same resistance value and one is different. If I can only measure the resistance once, how can I identify which resistor is the different one? After looking at this question for like 10 minutes or so and I just can't figure it out, I'll look online for some solutions or I'll ask my professor or TA for some guidance. On the other side, engineering does have pretty simple concepts that aren't too hard to understand, so don't fall into the trap of redoing the easy questions just because it makes you feel better or makes you feel like you're making progress in your understanding. Instead, if you're doing a question and you can fully solve it in your head without needing to write anything down, then that's an indication that that question is just too easy and you should just move on and try to find something more complicated because you have a really Really good understanding of that particular question. For example, here's a basic physics question where we have to find the acceleration of the block down the incline as it slides down the hill. I can solve this in my head pretty quickly by using Newton's second law. I just take the net forces in the incline direction, do a little trigonometry to account for the angle, and with the information we have on the coefficient of friction, I can find the acceleration to be 3.2 meters per second squared. My fifth tip is that you should skip class if you feel like you need to. You only have 24 hours in a day and every hour spent on school, you should try their best to make sure that it isn't wasted. Here are a few reasons for why I've skipped class in the past. First, sometimes your professor just sucks, has a really thick accent, or no matter how hard you try, you just can't understand them. So you're better off spending the hour studying or teaching yourself instead of sitting through a lecture where you're not taking any information in. Second, you have a job interview or an exam coming up that needs your immediate attention and your time is tight. So you're better off preparing for that instead of going to class. Just make sure to ask a friend for their notes so that you're caught up on what you've missed during class. And three, sleeping in. Sometimes I have to say a play to understand a particular concept or solve a particular problem set, so I just end up sleeping in and skipping my morning lectures that day. However, when I did this, I always ask a friend of mine to send me a picture of their notes so I'm caught up on what I've missed. Some students just take pride in studying till 3 a.m., sleeping for 4 hours, and going to their 8 a.m. lecture. They treat lack of sleep like a badge of honor, and they think it's what you need to be successful in engineering. That's extremely untrue. I've actually met people who come to class every single morning really, really tired because they had to spend late nights studying or preparing for interviews, but all that tells me is they just can't manage their time properly, which is why they have to stay up late to be able to do things that they couldn't do in the regular hours. I always set a rule that I need to get at least seven and a half hours a night of sleep. If I feel that I need to sacrifice sleep to study for an exam I have tomorrow, for example, then I'm better off just going to sleep and then hoping that I can figure it out tomorrow during the exam after a good night's sleep. There's honestly nothing you can do to help you at that point if you left all your work to the last minute like that. If you can't be productive and studying during the 16 hours you have in a day, then depriving yourself from sleep won't really help you. What really matters is what you do in the hours where you're awake, not how little you sleep. Anyways, when studying engineering, use the Feynman technique, have a frictionless study setup, control how much time you spend on each task, never ever feel like you need to deprive yourself from sleep to be successful, and skip class if you need to. If this video brought you value, check out these two videos where I give some more study tips and advice. Peace!